So, um, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we shall continue the memorial lectures for the Gang of Four. Atia Bot, Singer, and Hisbrook. And uh, we have several talks on uh, for different uh, 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 mathematicians out of these four great mathematicians. And today uh, we have Francis and uh, Peter uh, Kreimer will chair this uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you, Yeah. Um, it's my very great pleasure to introduce today's speaker in this series of talks. Frances Cohen is known for her fundamental contributions to symplectic and algebraic geometry, for her development of geometric invariant theory in these linked disciplines, and for her application of these tools for the understanding of moduli problems. She was made a dame of the British Empire by the Queen in the New Year's Honours of 2014, not just for her seminal contributions to mathematics itself, but for her extraordinary service to the mathematical community in the UK and worldwide. Um, as a reminder, there'll be a time for questions at the end of the talk and during the talk and in the Q&A time at the end. Um, do use the Q&A uh, box rather than the chat to, to post your questions and um, as much as there's time for, Francis will uh, be able to address some of those questions at, at the very end. Um, so with that, thank you very much. and. Um, Please welcome Francis Kerman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. So let me um, share my screen. Right, so is that um, showing right? Okay, so um, thank you again, Peter, for um, uh, for a very kind introduction. So I would like to um, uh, say a little bit about the work of, of two of, of the, um, the gang of, of four, um, Michael Atier and, and Raoul Bott, and, um, and in particular two uh, papers that they wrote <clears throat> in, the, um, in the early 1980s, so around the time that, um, uh, that I was Michael Atier's uh, student in in Oxford. So uh, there are these these two papers uh, that I want to um, say something about. So the first one was um, uh, uh, was uh, titled "The Angles Equations Over Riemann Surfaces," and it brings together a huge range of of different parts of mathematics. Um, algebraic topology, Morse theory, algebraic geometry, number theory, gauge theory, analysis, um, and in particular, symplectic uh, geometry, symplectic and, and Kähler geometry. And uh, some of the, those ingredients are very closely related to uh, the subject matter of, of the other paper that I, I want to talk about which is um, uh, the moment map and, and equivariant cohomology. So in fact, although uh, this second paper was, was published um, later than the Yang Mills paper, uh, what I want to do is, is talk first about the ingredients for the... Um, hello? Um, uh, for the, um, for the uh, moment map and, and equivariant homology paper, because in, in many ways, um, uh, these are important ingredients that, that go into the Yang Mills uh, paper, but slightly more, more self-contained, perhaps. Okay, so let's um, um, say a little bit about uh, moment maps and um, uh, before we uh, talk about other ingredients. So suppose that uh, we've got a... Um, a smooth manifold um, X, which is a symplectic manifold. So, um, uh, uh, so we've got um, a symplectic form omega, uh, which is a, a closed non-degenerate two form on, on X. And suppose we've got a compactly grouped G uh, acting on, on the manifold X and preserving the, the symplectic form. So then a, um, uh, a moment map or momentum map is um, uh, 
uh, is a smooth map from, uh, from the manifold X to the dual of the Lie algebra of the compact group G, which uh, is equivariant with respect to the given action on X and the co-adjoint action on, um, on the dual of the Lie algebra and satisfies this uh, dif differential equation, which is, is saying that if you take the component of, of the moment map mu in the direction of any vector A in the, in the Lie algebra, then the derivative of, um, of that component of the, of the moment map at a point X um, is, um, uh, is dual with respect to the uh, duality defined by the symplectic form to the infinitesimal action of the element of the Lie algebra at X. So, um, so in other words, uh, we're saying that, that this component um, of, of the moment map in the direction of, of any A in the Lie algebra is a Hamiltonian function for the infinitesimal action of, of, um, of the element of the Lie algebra. And a special case, which is going to be very important is the case where you've actually got a Kähler manifold and uh, the group um, is acting holomorphically as well as preserving the, the symplectic form. And then the action will extend to a holomorphic action of the complexified group, which will be a complex reductive group. Um, though the complexified group will not, um, uh, will not preserve the symplectic form. And so what happens is the restriction of the symplectic form to the inverse image of zero under the, uh, the moment map is degenerate precisely along the orbits of, of the group action. And that tells us that the so-called symplectic quotient, which is the, uh, the inverse image of, um, uh, of zero under the, uh, uh, under the moment map, uh, quotiented by the, the group action, inherits a stratified symplectic structure. So I am faintly worried that um, um, that Peter, your your picture has frozen. Are you? Um, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, you can. Great. Okay. Good. So um, so we've got this symplectic quotient with um, um, uh, which uh, inherits this stratified symplectic structure and uh, and slightly more generally if you have um, uh, any other value of of the moment map let's say a regular value zeta of the moment map then we can look at the um, the Marsden Weinstein reduction so-called at at, um, at this value uh, which is the inverse image quotiented by the the stabilizer under the coadjoint action so then if, if we have this assumption of, of being a regular value, then um, we get only very mild singularities. So this is a, uh, gets the structure of a symplectic orbifold. And in the Kähler case, at least if, um, if zero is a regular value of the moment map, then it turns out that we can identify the symplectic quotient with the quotient of an open subset of, of X by the complexified group, and it inherits a, a Kähler structure. And even if zero is not a regular value of, of the moment map, then we can, um, we can still uh, give um, the inverse image of zero quotiented by the compact group, the symplectic quotient, a, a stratified Kähler structure, um, but it will have uh, in general worse singularities. And, um, and the reason that this picture is important in the Yang Mills situation is that there's an infinite dimensional moment map which which in some sense plays a, a crucial role in the Yang Mills situation. But for the moment let's um, continue to to think about the um, uh, the finite dimensional setting. So uh, in order to um, to understand the link with Kähler geometry uh, in the case when you don't have uh, a regular, when zero is not a regular value of the moment map, uh, we can uh, think about what happens when we've got um, in the algebraic geometric situation, when we've got a, a linear action of our, our group G um, on, a, 
on a projective variety and let's let's think of the projective variety as, as sitting inside some projective space pn and assume that the group acts linearly by a unitary representation of of the compact group g so that will tell us that it uh, that the group preserves the uh, the Kähler form the fubini studi Kähler form on x which is just restrict, restricted from the projective space and in that situation, you can just write down a moment map. So um, it's not terribly important exactly what the formula is, but there is a nice formula. And uh, for um, a particular choice of, of moment map, so, so the definition of, of a moment map means that it's, you can always add a central constant to, to the moment map, um, which will, uh, uh, and you'll get another, uh, another moment map in that way. But so we, we write down this particular moment map for um, uh, an action on, on, um, uh, on, the, um, uh, on a projective variety like this. And then we can link up um, the moment map picture with the ideas of, of geometric invariant theory, which was developed by, um, uh, by Michael Atiyah in, in the uh, 1960s, sorry, which was developed by uh, David Mumford in the 1960s in order to think about quotients mm -hmm. of projective varieties and, and more general algebraic varieties by, um, uh, by uh, complex reductive group actions and, and linear algebraic, uh, reductive linear algebraic group actions on, on algebraic varieties. So we have this notion of, of semi-stability and stability for, um, uh, for the uh, complexified group action. And uh, so we can link that nicely with, uh, with this moment map picture. So a, uh, a point in X is semi-stable in the sense of, of geometric invariant theory um, for this linear action even only if the closure of the complexified orbit uh, meets the inverse image of zero under the moment map. And it's stable if, if the actual orbit of X meets uh, not just the, uh, the zero locus of, of the moment map, but the regular part of that. So then it turns out that, um, well, we get an inclusion of the zero locus of the moment map in the semi-stable locus. And uh, this inclusion composed with the quotient map um, to the, the GIT quotient that, you, that comes from Mumford's geometric invariant theory, this uh, will be uh, uh, invariant for the compact group action and um, uh, we'll get an induced map from the symplectic quotient to the, the GIT quotient, which is a homeomorphism. So, um, so in, in this uh, setting and, uh, and more generally in, in the Kähler setting, we can identify the, uh, the symplectic quotient with uh, something which gets an, uh, an induced complex structure um, and the uh, symplectic, the stratified symplectic structure and, and the complex structure match up to give us a Kähler structure. And there's a, um, a nice simple example where you've taken four points on, on the, um, the, the Riemann sphere, the um, complex projective space, uh, or the pro complex projective line, and uh, we have rotations, um, the complexified group, um, Mobius transformations, and then the stable locus is where the four points are distinct, and you get a, a nice um, uh, a quotient of that, which is just P1 with three points removed via the cross ratio and the semi-stable locus, we're allowed to add in um, four tuples where at most two of the points coincide. And then um, we get the, um, uh, the GIT quotient, which is just uh, P1. So we have nine strictly semi-stable orbits and three of those go into each of the three missing points in P1. And the moment map is essentially given by the center of gravity and the symplectic quotient we can think of as being represented by balanced configurations of points on, on the sphere. So 
I now want to say a little bit about a paper which um, Michael Atiyah wrote, in fact, by himself, called Convexity and Commuting Hamiltonians in a, around the same sort of time. And um, uh, he was looking at uh, a torus action um, on uh, a symplectic manifold. So let's say compact connected symplectic manifold um, and uh, with a moment map. And so he proved a theorem which was actually proved uh, independently at essentially the same time by Victor Gilliman and Shlomo Sternberg. Um, so he proved that um, the image under this, this moment map for the torus action on the compact connected symplectic manifold X is always a convex polytope and it's the convex hull in um, the dual of the Lie algebra of the um, of the torus of um, the finite set which is just given by the image of the fixed points for the torus action and he showed that if you're in the Kähler situation uh, so that we've got an action of, of the complexified torus then we can look at um, closures of um, uh, complexified torus orbits in in x and they will give us some um, uh, uh, subsets which are, are not necessarily smooth. So um, sub varieties a little bit um, with potential singularities. And so in that situation, he was, he was able to show that the, um, uh, the first statement in this theorem is, is still true, even though um, we've, we've got potential singularities. So again, the image of the closure of, of the uh, complex torus orbit is a convex polytope and it's, um, it's the convex hull of, again, the, um, the image of the fixed points in, in the closure of, of the orbit. And moreover, the moment map now gives us a homeomorphism from the um, uh, the, the quotient, the topological quotient of the uh, closure of the orbit, you can think of as a toric variety, um, quotiented by the, um, uh, the compact torus, uh, that's uh, homeomorphic to this, this convex polytope. So in particular, um, that uh, can be used when, when you're, it can be applied when you've got maximal torus of a compact uh, non-abelian group acting on a symplectic manifold uh, with some moment map. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the norm squared of, of that moment map, then um, it turns out that, um, that this is a, uh, an equivariantly perfect, though degenerate Morse function. And this is, is basically the, um, uh, the finite dimensional picture uh, version of, of what Atiyah and Bott um, uh, uh, proved in um, or, or, or studied and, and proved in, in the Yang Mills paper. So uh, the, um, uh, the convexity theorem of, um, uh, of Atia and Gilman and, uh, and Sternberg as, as well. Um, this is, is one of the ingredients, uh, convexity appears in, in the Yang Mills, um, in the Yang Mills paper in a, um, in a subtle but very important way. Okay, so another um, uh, important result that happens around the, um, uh, the same time about uh, torus actions on, on symplectic manifolds uh, was um, uh, the formula um, proved by Hans Deustermant and Gerrit Heckman uh, for the push forward by a, a moment, a, a torus moment map of the symplectic measure on the symplectic manifold X. And so they showed that this push forward is always piecewise polynomial. And an equivalent way of, of, um, of saying that and, and describing their, their formula is, is to, uh, to say that the stationary phase approximation for, um, for the Fourier transform is actually exact and is given by um, 
uh, a nice explicit formula where we are um, uh, taking the, the Fourier transform of, of the um, moment map evaluated in, um, in some, well, ideally a, a generic um, direction in, in the Lie algebra of the torus, though um, you can make sense of this for, for any uh, element of the Lie algebra of the torus. And, uh, and we get a formula which is a sum over the set of connected components of the uh, of the fixed point set of the torus action on the compact connected symplectic manifold. And of course, uh, it comes from the definition of a moment map that the moment map will then, because it's a torus action, will be constant on these um, uh, connected, each of these connected components. And so we have a, um, a well-defined value and the other important ingredient in the formula is that we need to uh, involve the equivariant Euler class for the normal bundle to each of these connected components of the fixed point set. So in this, um, uh, in this um, expression, we're, um, we're dividing by this equivariant Euler class to the normal bundle. So we should... Um, uh, we have to make sense of, of dividing by this equivariant Euler class. But that, that makes sense. Um, so we need, to, we need to think about um, this as a, a formula in, in terms of equivariant cohomology here. So the equivariant cohomology of, um, well, of any space on which F on which the torus acts um, is uh, can be defined in terms of the Borel construction. So we take the ordinary cohomology of F, uh, the product of F with the, um, with the total space for the, um, the classifying, um, the universal classifying bundle for, uh, for the torus. And then we quotient by the diagonal action of the torus on this, um, on this product. But in the situation that we're looking at, then, uh, the torus action is actually trivial. And so uh, this equivariant cohomology just um, decomposes as the tense product of the ordinary cohomology of, of, um, uh, of the fixed point uh, component F with the uh, cohomology of the classifying space of the torus. And that's just a, a polynomial ring on, um, well, um, the number of generators is, is just the, the rank of, of the torus. So if we think about our equivariant um, Euler class, uh, we've got our, our um, equivariant Euler class E sub F of the, uh, for the normal to the, um, this fixed point uh, component. And so it lies in this tensor product and we can think of about the component uh, such where the um, uh, the part in in the cohomology of F is of degree zero, so that will just be identified with the cohomology of of the classifying space of the torus, which is this polynomial ring. And so um, uh, so it turns out that this component uh, is always non-zero, and we'll be seeing uh, the argument for this. Um, again, when I'm um, talking about one of the crucial ingredients in, in the Yang Mills paper. Uh, so that means that this Euler class uh, is given by um, uh, something which is, is not a zero divisor in the equivariant cohomology. And that's because um, the other, uh, other terms in it will have to be nilpotent because terms of positive degree in the cohomology of, of F will be nilpotent. So the fact that um, um, that we've we've got this um, um, this class which is not a zero divisor means that we can then um, uh, we can then invert it when we when we localize um, by um, uh, taking um, basically localizing the um, uh, taking the field of fractions of, of this um, polynomial ring. And so that means that this, um, 
this term that appears on the right of the Deustemart Heckman formula at the bottom here, um, we can interpret it as a, a rational function on the, um, on the dual of, of the Lie algebra. And so uh, the left hand side is a, is a polynomial function on the, uh, uh, on the dual of on the, the Lie algebra. And um, so we're, uh, we're just um, expressing this, or Deussmatt and Heckman are expressing this polynomial function as a sum of rational functions uh, indexed by the uh, connected components of, of the fixed point set of the torus action. Okay, so in the paper Moment Maps and, and Equivariant Cohomology, um, Atiyah and Bott uh, observed that this formula, the Deustemart Heckman formula, um, can be made sense of and, and proved using localization formulas in, um, in equivariant cohomology. So for a, uh, a compact group uh, G um, acting on, uh, on a manifold, not necessarily a torus, but any compact group, uh, they, they, give a, they use a, a Durham version of equivariant cohomology in terms of the usual Durham complex on the manifold X, the Weyl algebra, um, which is the um, uh, tense product of the exterior algebra on, on the dual of the, uh, the algebra and the, and the symmetric algebra with um, a certain differential operator uh, using the structure constants for, for the Lie algebra. And then um, the notion of a, of a basic, of a basic complex in, in the tense product of these two. Um, so a basic with respect to the, the group action. And so this gives you a, a, a Durham um, model for equivariant cohomology in terms of this, this basic complex. And what happens is that then a symplectic form is, is closed uh, just from the point of view of, of uh, the usual Durham complex, but it's not necessarily equivariantly closed if you've got a compatible group action. But if you take the symplectic form and you subtract the moment map, thinking of that as an equivariant uh, form, and whether you subtract or add and whether you put in a factor of i or not depends on your conventions and I'm not going to be uh, careful about that but if you um, if you do it right then uh, then what you get is an equivariant cohomology class provided that that mu is a is a moment map and so uh, Atiyah and Bott in this paper they they think about the um, the equivariant cohomology of the uh, symplectic manifold as a module over the cohomology of, of the classifying space of a torus. So we're now back to a torus action, um, which is just this polynomial ring. And they show that there are both restriction and push forward maps. Um, well, there are these, these restriction and push forward maps that go between the equivariant cohomology of the whole of X and the equivariant cohomology of the fixed point set, which just breaks up according to the um, connected components. And the kernels and co-kernels of these maps are torsion modules. So, um, so that means that modulo torsion, these um, uh, restriction and push forward maps are, um, are isomorphisms. And we can, um, look at the um, composition and it's given on a um, connected component, the equivalent cohomology of a connected component of the fixed point set by uh, multiplication by this equivariant Euler class of the normal bundle. And so then the um, component of this equivariant Euler class in the part of the equivariant cohomology which corresponds to the, uh, the zero degree um, part in F, um, as we uh, discussed before, it's explicitly given 
by um, a, um, a polynomial in these um, uh, in the um, generators of, of for the polynomial ring, uh, which is a, a product of linear terms, which are determined by the representation of the uh, the torus on the normal to the fixed point set, and we know that those are all um, uh, those uh, will have non-zero weights, and so we end up with a uh, a non-zero polynomial here. And so if we localize with just with respect to, um, to all these um, zero components of the equivariant Euler classes, um, then we find that we can describe the inverse to the push forward map in terms of um, uh, restricting to each of the fixed point sets and, um, uh, and dividing by this uh, equivariant Euler class. And so in particular, that uh, tells us that any equivariant Euler class can be expressed as a, a sum of um, uh, terms uh, over the, um, uh, summed over these, these fixed point components, provided that we're, we're prepared to, to localize. Um, so that on the right-hand side here, we have in uh, rational functions, um, uh, whereas the left-hand side, it's it's some polynomial. So um, then uh, the doisomat heckman formula can be regarded as a very special uh, case of this um, formula. So we can first replace um, um, phi by its product with um, e to the um, uh, the um, equivalently closed extension of, of, of the symplectic form, which is given by uh, omega minus, minus the moment map. And um, so then if we push forward to a point or we integrate over X, then we get a, a nice integration formula, which gives us the doistermatt heckman formula as the special case when um, this phi is, is now one or the original phi is, is E of, of um, X of, of omega bar. So, um, so this was the um, uh, the moment map and equivariant um, cohomology paper, or at least some of the ingredients. And these are ingredients that um, that slot in, or the, at least the same ideas slot into the the Yang Mills paper. So now I'd like to say um, a bit about the uh, the Yang Mills paper. So the Yang Mills equations over a Riemann surface. So here, um, the, um, some of the basic ingredients are that we have a compact Riemann surface, sigma. Um, for, to avoid special cases, let's assume that the genus is, is at least two. And um, we're thinking about holomorphic vector bundles over this compact Riemann surface of, um, of fixed rank and, and n and degree d. And so then if you want to construct a moduli space of, of these things, then you have to um, impose some sort of stability, semi-stability constraint, which links up with, um, with the notions in, in Mumford's GIT. So in this situation, we, we say that um, a holomorphic vector bundle is stable or semi-stable if uh, it has no proper subbundle uh, whose slope is greater than or strictly greater than the slope of the um, the bundle e, and here the slope is is just the um, the ratio of the degree and and the rank, the topological invariance for uh, for the bundle. And so then it turns out that um, any semi-stable bundle has a um, Jordan Holder filtration uh, by um, subbundles such that the subquotients are all actually stable and all have the same slope as the original semi-stable bundle E. And there may be, as is uh, as, as typical in these situations, there may be plenty of, of different um, Jordan Holder filtrations but their associated graded 
bundles, so the, just the direct sum of the subquotients ej by ej minus one, um, that associated graded bundle is, is independent up to isomorphism of, of the choice of Jordan Holder filtration. So, um, so we have this, this um, well-defined associated graded. And then we say that um, uh, semi-stable bundles E and, and E prime of, um, um, of the same rank and, and degree, they'll have to be, are S equivalent if and only if their associated graded uh, bundles are isomorphic to each other. So if, um, if E is actually stable, then its Jordan Holder filtration is trivial and the associated graded is, is just E. And so, um, and so then we're just saying that E primed has got to be um, isomorphic to, uh, to E. Uh, so for stable bundles, we're just looking at, at isomorphism, but for semi-stable bundles, we have this um, uh, slightly modified equivalence relation. And that's what you need to get a nice moduli space. So, um, uh, so we have M sigma N and D, uh, the moduli space of semi-stable bundles of, uh, of rank N degree D uh, over sigma up taken up to S equivalents. And it turns out that um, you can, uh, you can construct this, this moduli space in, in lots of different ways, in particular in terms of um, uh, using uh, Mumford's GIT as a, um, as a quotient of um, an algebraic variety by, um, by a group action, a, a GL, uh, GL action. So we've got this, um, this moduli space of, of semi-stable bundles, and then it contains as an open uh, subset the moduli space of um, of stable uh, rank n and degree d bundles, uh, which is it's just a moduli space up to isomorphism. So, the um, uh, the uh, the actual um, uh, as a as a uh, just the underlying set is is just the isomorphism classes of of these these bundles, but with a um, uh, a natural um, uh, uh, structure of, of a algebraic variety. So, and you can also look at um, moduli spaces of, of um, semi-stable principal um, bundles for the complexification of any compactly group G, but I'll concentrate on, on vector bundles, so we're working with the unitary group. So, um, as I said, um, um, uh, we've got this moduli space of, of semi-stable bundles is a, um, a complex, uh, complex variety. It's actually a projective variety. Uh, its dimension is um, uh, n squared times um, g minus one plus one. And if n and d are co-prime, then semi-stability is equivalent to stability. And um, what we have is a... Um, a compact Kähler manifold. So, um, oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, and then in the case when N and D are not co-prime, then we have strictly semi-stable bundles, and and we have to, uh, and we have singularities in general for the um, for the um, the moduli space. But um, the uh, open subset uh, of of stable bundles is is better behaved. So I said that, um, that this moduli space can be constructed using Mumford's GIT as a, um, uh, as a, a finite dimensional um, quotient, uh, GIT quotient, and therefore also um, symplectic quotient, where we're working with a, um, a linear action on some um, uh, some algebraic variety and and um, and taking a quotient uh, in the sense of, of of GIT, or we can take a symplectic quotient. But to do that, 
there are lots of choices involved and in some ways it's more natural to um to think of an infinite dimensional construction which um is what um Atiyah and Bott was was studying in uh in the young mills paper so they observed that that this uh moduli space you can think of as um, being given by an infinite dimensional um version of a symplectic quotient or a GIT quotient, uh, where the space that you're taking a quotient of is an infinite dimensional complex affine space. It can be identified with the space of all unitary connections on a fixed C infinity Hermitian vector bundle of the appropriate um, rank and degree, so the appropriate topological structure. Um, a quotient by the action of the, the gauge group, uh, which is the, uh, the group of unitary automorphisms of this fixed C infinity Hermitian uh, bundle. Or that, that's if you're thinking about the symplectic quotient point of view. And if you're thinking about the GIT quotient point of view, then, then you're, you're working with the complexification, uh, the complexified group, which is just all the complex automorphisms of of this um, C infinity bundle E zero. So they, um, Atiyah and Bott observed that this infinite dimensional complex affine space has a natural um, uh, flat Kähler structure, which is invariant under the gauge group. And that if you associate to a connection, uh, it's, it's curvature, then you can think of that as a moment map for uh, for the action of the gauge group on this infinite dimensional affine space. So I said before that moment maps are only defined up to the addition of a of a central constant, and it turns out that if you um, if you want to look at a uh, symplectic quotient in this setup, then the curvature isn't quite the um, the right choice of moment map because if you want to get a, a non-empty symplectic quotient, then you need to add a, a, a suitable central constant uh, to the curvature to give um, uh, another moment map, just the uh, curvature uh, plus constant. And in that case, if you do that so that you end up with a, um, a non-empty symplectic quotient, then this symplectic quotient you can identify with moduli space of semi-stable. Um, uh, holomorphic bundles. And that's essentially via the theorem of, of Narasimhan and Shashadri um, involving um, uh, unitary representations of the, of the fundamental group um, relating to, uh, to semi-stable bundles. So, but you can also think of it in terms of, of the um, symplectic quotient, GIT quotient um, identification. So if we take the norm squared of this moment map, then up to the addition of the constant, which, um, um, uh, which we added to the, um, to the curvature, th what we get is the so-called Yang-Mills functional for, um, for the unitary group. Um, so the Yang-Mills functional um, is, given by the norm squared in the sense that we're taking uh, the, uh, the norm squared of, of, of the curvature and then integrating it over the, the Riemann surface. So, um, so this is the, uh, the Yang-Mills functional, which is sort of the focus or a large, uh, one of the um, important, very important ingredients to the atiyah bot paper on Yang-Mills. And so the critical points uh, of this Yang-Mills functional given by the Euler-Lagrange equations are the solutions to the, um, uh, the so-called Yang-Mills equations on, um, on the Riemann surface. And we can identify the moduli space uh, with the, um, the minimum of the Yang-Mills functional. So that will correspond to um, uh, the inverse image of, of zero under this, um, this moment map, which is just the uh, um, uh, curvature plus appropriate constant. 
Um, and uh, so we get the minimum of, of the Yang Mills functional quotiented by the gauge group. And that gives us our, our moduli space. So um, then in, if we're in the nice situation where the, um, the rank and the degree N and D are co-prime, then the, um, the gauge group acts in a, in a nice way um, on the, the minimum uh, of, of the Yang Mills functional. So we just have at worst um, uh, finite uh, isotropy groups. And so that tells us that the, um, the cohomology, or at least the rational cohomology of the moduli space, uh, knowing that is, is essentially equivalent to knowing the equivariant cohomology of the minimum of the Yang Mills functional with respect to the gauge group. Um, there is this, um, yeah, I said that the action of the gauge group uh, just has uh, finite stabilizers. That's wrong. So uh, there's a, um, uh, a one parameter circle just um, uh, acting by, by scalar multiplication, which, um, which acts trivially um, and, um, uh, but if we quotient the gauge group by that circle, then uh, then we get some um, just finite isotropy groups. And because of that circle action, we don't get an identification quite of the equivariant cohomology with respect to the gauge group of the minimum with the ordinary cohomology of, of the, um, the moduli space. We have to um, stick in this extra um, uh, polynomial ring and one variable which which corresponds to the um, which is given by the cohomology of the classifying space of the circle but um, but understanding uh, one one of the the equivalent cohomologies is equivalent to understanding the the cohomology of the moduli space so the idea the basic idea behind the atia bot paper was that um, uh, they should uh, try uh, using uh, applying Morse theory, the ideas of Morse theory, to the Yang Mills functional. Um, and uh, so, so Morse theory, at least if you've got a nice um, uh, smooth Morse function with, um, with non-degenerate isolated critical points on a compact um, finite dimensional manifold, that uh, gives you um, uh, Morse inequalities, and even if you've got a, a Morse bot function where where you don't have isolated inequalities, uh, you don't have isolated singularities. But um, um, uh, but the uh, 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 you don't have isolated critical points, but the critical uh, points form uh, submanifolds, and you get uh, non-degeneracy in normal directions. So if you've if you've got a reasonably nice finite dimensional situation like that, then Morse theory tells you that um, you get um, Morse inequalities relating the, uh, the cohomology of, of the whole space to the cohomology of, of the, um, uh, the critical loci. And if you're lucky, then those Morse inequalities are actually equalities, in which case you say that the Morse function is a perfect Morse function. So what um, Atia and Bott, the basic idea was to, to show that the Yang-Mills functional should be not perfect, but equivariantly perfect. So that um, it should give you uh, equivariant Morse inequalities with respect to the, uh, the gauge group, uh, which are actually equalities. So, oh, so um, can other people, so somehow my screen has gone, um, let me just see if I can go back. Apologies for that. Yeah. So I don't know if that happened to other people, but suddenly I was just seeing a very small picture of, of my slides. But okay. So um, uh, so the idea 
of, of a tier and bot was to, um, to sh uh, show that the angle's function is equivalently perfect. And, um, and then in the case when the um, rank and the degree uh, are co-prime, to, um, uh, to use this to understand the uh, cohomology of the, um, of the moduli space, by relating it to the, uh, the equivariant cohomology of the, the total space, which is this um, infinite dimensional uh, affine space, and the other critical loci for the angles function uh, using, uh, using more theoretic ideas. But if you wanted to, to do that properly, then there are lots of very serious analytic difficulties, partly because you're working in infinite dimensions, but also because the yang mills functional is very far from being a, a nice Morse function and the connected components of, of the critical locus um, uh, in general have singularities. So at a later stage, Daska, uh, Daskalopoulos did actually show, uh, provide the right analysis um, showing that the yang mills paths of, of steepest descent for the yang mills functional do converge appropriately and, um, and that you can um, uh, really use the, um, uh, the, the sort of direct um, analog of, of Morse theory in this situation. But a and bots um, uh, just got around that, avoided that by instead of um, uh, trying to do this analysis, they just guessed what the analysis should um, reveal um, what the associated uh, more stratification of this infinite dimensional space should be. So more stratification, meaning that you, uh, you stratify the space by looking at the limiting behavior of the, um, the paths of steepest descent uh, for some, um, some Riemannian metric, which in the Kähler case, you just take to be the Kähler metric uh, for this functional. So, they, um, uh, they, they guessed what the, this stratification should look like and then proved directly that it had the right uh, properties to, uh, to lead to Morse inequalities, equivalent Morse inequalities, which would be equalities. So how does, that, uh, how does, this, um, how does this work and what's the guess, um, uh, their guess of the, the um, stratification? Well, it's in terms of the hard and Arasiman type of um, holomorphic bundle. So we're working in complex dimension one. So the integrability condition for D-bar operators is vacuously true, satisfied. And so this space of, of unitary connections can also be thought of as the space of all um, holomorphic structures on our fixed C infinity bundle. And so that means that um, we can stratify this, this space using a hard and Arasiman type of a holomorphic vector bundle, which is defined in terms of its canonical filtration, its hard and Arasiman filtration, which any holomorphic vector bundle over the Riemann surface has. So we have a, um, a filtration by subbundles uh, sub such that each uh, subquotient ej by ej minus one is semi-stable and the slopes um, uh, dj over nj, they're strictly decreasing. So it's uh, not difficult to check from the definition of semi-stability that, um, um, that uh, there will exist this, um, this canonical hard and Arasim infiltration. And so the type, the hard and Arasiman type of the bundle is just given by uh, essentially by the, um, uh, the degrees and the ranks of these, these sub bundles or the sub quotients. And a, a TN bot um, uh, uh, use uh, the, the vector which um, uh, consists of um, the, the slopes of the uh, sub quotients appearing each of them appears um, the rank, um, it, it's the number of times is, is given by the rank of that subquotient. So that's a, um, um, 
a convenient way to um, uh, to sort of index the the type, and um, and so we have the um, uh, subset of of this infinite dimensional affine space, which it just corresponds to the holomorphic structures of of this particular Harden Arasiman type. So this is repeating um, what I just said, and so uh, in particular the type where you've just got um, uh, d over n up to d over n, then that corresponds to the open subset consisting of semi-stable holomorphic structures. And one of the reasons for using this particular vector to, um, uh, to um, index, well, yeah. So one of the things that you want to, to uh, understand about this stratification is that um, uh, uh, you, you want to understand the closures of the strata. And it turns out that there is a, um, uh, a partial ordering on the, um, on the indices, on these, these hard and Arasiman types, such that um, the, um, the closure of any, uh, any of these hard and Arasiman strata is uh, contained in the union of strata labeled by higher, uh, that type and higher type. And the type can be described in terms of this convex polygon. Um, sorry, I've put P twice, which shouldn't have happened. Um, so this convex polygon with, um, with vertices in terms of, of the subbundles. Um, so uh, if you have one convex polygon lying above above the other, then that gives you the, um, the partial ordering. So we have, um, um, yes, so we have this, um, this stratification by hard and narrow semen type. And so why did Atiyah and Bot um, guess that it should be related to the, um, uh, the Yang Mills? Um, uh, functional and, and the more stratification of the Yang Mills functional. Well, um, for one thing, the Yang Mills functional, we saw it's the norm squared of a moment map for the action of, of this gauge group with respect to uh, the Kähler uh, structure. And what always happens for uh, the norm squared of a moment map is that the trajectories of the gradient flow uh, always stay within the orbit of the complexified group, in this case, the complexified gauge group. And we know that the hard and narrow Siemens strata are invariant under the action of the complexified gauge group. So at least we know that the trajectories of the gradient flow stay uh, in, in any given stratum. And, um, and also you can, uh, you can see that um, uh, the limits of the trajectories are contained in, in bounded regions uh, of the um, uh, uh, compact um, regions in, in the, the strata. So if you do have convergence, then it's got to converge to something in the stratum. And also you can see that the locus uh, consisting of, of solutions to the Yang-Mills equations, so the critical locus for the Yang-Mills um, functional, it's a disjoint union of connected components, and each of uh, each of those is is contained in a particular hard and narrow Siemen stratum. So that was the basis for for Atiyah and Bot conjecturing. As I said, it was later proved by Daskalopoulos that the hard and narrow Siemen stratification should be actually the more stratification for the Young-Mills functional, but they just worked with the hard and narrow Siemen stratification. So. Um, what they showed was that, um, uh, so these strata are, are locally closed submanifolds of this, um, uh, this infinite dimensional uh, affine space, at CND, of finite co-dimension. And so, and they have this, um, this partial ordering so that you can remove a stratum uh, one stratum at a time, essentially, and um, and always have an open subset um, that you're working with. And so that means that um, you get uh, Tom Geese in long exact sequences for each each stratum when you remove it from um, uh, the open subset that it's a it's a closed um, 
uh, some manifold of, uh, you get the um, associated Tom Giesen uh, long exact sequence of equivariant cohomology, uh, where you're identifying the relative cohomology of the, um, uh, the open subset and the complement of, of the stratum that you're removing, that equivariant cohomology can be identified with the cohomology of um, the stratum that you're removing, but in uh, degrees shifted by the, um, the real co-dimension. So we, we have these long exact sequences and they will lead to um, Morse inequalities. But what Etienne Bott showed was that the, um, in the case of the Ang Mills, well, in the case of this stratification, the, uh, these long exact sequences, um, uh, these long exact sequences break up into short exact sequences. So is there a, is there a question? No. Okay, um, so, so this is a, a, a crucial result and, and it's a very beautiful uh, argument. So I want to just say very briefly how the argument works. So we want to show that um, these uh, long exact sequences are actually short exact sequences. And that just means that um, we want to show that this, um, these maps are all injective. And for that, it's enough to show that if we compose them with um, just, a, a, well, any map, but in particular with the restriction map to the cohomology of, of the stratum, then that's injective. And what happens? Well, um, this composition is just multiplication by one of these equivariant Euler classes that we've seen before. So this time it's the equivariant Euler class of the normal bundle to the stratum. And so in order to show that, um, to show our result, we just need to show that this equivariant Euler class is not a zero divisor in the equivariant cohomology. And that's the sort of um, argument that we've seen before. So if our stratum um, is indexed by um, D1 over N1 up to DS over N, S that's meaning that the, um, the associated graded of the bundle is, um, is a direct sum of these um, um, semi-stable uh, bundles of, of slope, um, well, of, of um, degree DJ and, and rank NJ. So we can describe the um, equivariant cohomology uh, as, a, as a tensor product of um, the equivariant cohomologies of these, these semi-stable um, low size, sorry, misprint, this should be NJ and DJ here. And um, then we have a, this central subgroup that we've talked about before of the gauge group given by multiplication by scalars that's acting trivially. And so uh, that tells us that, um, uh, that just one of each of these terms contributes a, um, uh, a term which is just the uh, cohomology of the classifying space of the circle and then, um, uh, and then some, some other stuff. And so, um, uh, we have, as before, the uh, cohomology of the classifying space of, of the circle is, is just a polynomial ring of a, one variable in degree two. And so putting all those together, then you can look at the component of the equivariant Euler class of, the, um, uh, of this normal bundle in, um, uh, in this, um, uh, this cohomology. Um, uh, in this polynomial ring, and it's a non-zero polynomial um, uh, because it's the product of the weights of, 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 of this torus on the normal bundle, and, and those weights will all be uh, non-zero. So we, we get the, the result, um, the proof of this Atiyah-Bot lemma. Okay, so then, um, uh, as I discussed before, that... Um, uh, that gives us a, a nice, um, um, uh, this gives us a, the uh, equivariant perfection of this stratification. So we have a nice formula, which says that the, um, 
dimension of, of the equivariant cohomology of the whole space is can just be written as a sum over the um, the critical uh, well over these these strata and um, so then um, uh, we can pull out the semi-stable locus as one of those terms and then all the other terms can be expressed in uh, uh, inductively in terms of um, uh, semi-stable lo loci for, um, for smaller ranks and, and other degrees. So, um, so we have a, an expression like this. And so this leads to the inductive formula for uh, the equivariant cohomology for the, uh, uh, the semi-stable locus in terms of um, the cohomology of the whole space. And the whole space, of course, is just um, an affine space, an infinite dimensional affine space. So it's contractible. And so um, we end up looking at the cohomology of the classifying space of the gauge group, which Atien Bot um, uh, looked at and, and showed had um, have. Um, uh, can be described very explicitly, and in particular, the, um, the Betty numbers can be described. And so, when the common, when the um, rank and the degree are co-prime, then uh, we get this um, uh, description for the cohomology of the moduli space um, in terms of. Um, uh, this equivariant uh, cohomology given by the inductive formula, which um, Zagier later made explicit, and um, and we just have to knock out the um, uh, the stuff coming from the classifying space of the circle. So, um, and they also get um, multiplicative generators for the rational cohomology because saying that the stratification is equivariantly perfect is just saying that the restriction map from the the whole space to the semi-stable locus um, we, we find is subjective and, um, and a TN bot described generators for um, the uh, cohomology of the, the whole space, the classifying space of the cohomology of the uh, classifying space of the gauge group. And so they, uh, they give us generators for um, the uh, cohomology of the moduli space. So Witten um, uh, took this analysis further um, using the norm squared of, of the moment map, first of all in the compact finite dimensional case, and then looking at the Yang-Mills functional um, uh, and showed that um, uh, you could actually uh, use this to, um, to get uh, a complete set of relations between these, these generators. So, extending the, the description that Ian Bot gave of the cohomology of the moduli space. So I don't know, do I have um, a little bit more time to link up with, with the number theory point of view or, um, or should yeah. I? Yeah. You go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to finish by saying a bit about the um, uh, the relationship with the, the number theory approach and the vague conjectures um, approach, which um, 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 which Atiyah and Bot observed, and um, uh, there's a, a very nice parallel. So these these formulas for the um, Betty numbers of, of the moduli space um, uh, they were already known um, uh, before uh, the Atiyah Bot paper, though coming from completely different um, points of view, so, but giving equivalent formulas. So, um, Hardan Arasima and Desal Ramanan uh, used um, ideas coming from arithmetic geometry and the vague conjectures to obtain these um, equivalent formulas. And um, so, there are similarities uh, between um, the two uh, methods. So both in the in terms of stacks and, and more modern language, perhaps, though of course stacks were around at the time. Um, the um, 
both points of view, both methods are, are based on uh, the idea that this um, this canonical stratification by Harder Narasimhan type of the moduli stack of 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 all bundles over uh, the Riemann surface up to up to isomorphism. So um, both me both um, methods use this this stratification, and both methods use the fact that when uh, the rank and the degree are co-prime, the Betty numbers of of the moduli space are determined by the dimensions of the cohomology groups of essentially the, the semi-stable stratum of this stack. And both um, use inductive descriptions of the unstable strata in terms of, of um, moduli of semi-stable bundles of, of smaller rank. So, um, so there are sort of analogies um, between the, um, the different methods, but they're also very different. So, um, so in particular, the way in which they use the, the stratification to get some version of, of this inductive formula for, um, for the Poincaré series, the, the Betty numbers of, of the um, uh, moduli stack of, of um, semi-stable uh, bundles. Um, so they're very different methods for um, for this, and also how they um, calculate the um, the Poincaré series of, of the whole stack of, of um, uh, moduli stack of all bundles of rank n and degree d. So in the the Atiyah bot the gauge theory Yang Mills um, approach, um, Atiyah and Bot are using their their lemma to get equivariant perfection of the stratification, and that's um, uh, that's where this inductive formula comes from. And they're using the contractibility of um, this infinite dimensional affine space to, uh, to relate the, uh, express the, um, the Betty numbers of, of the whole stack of all bundles with the, um, uh, the classifying space of the gauge group and therefore uh, calculating. Um, whereas the arithmetic approach um, based on the Vey conjectures, the Vey conjectures are sort of counting points over associated varieties uh, defined over finite fields. And so the, um, the stratification um, counting points uh, on a space which is stratified, um, uh, clearly you just, um, uh, you get the sum of, of, of the number of points over, uh, over the individual strata. So, um, so that's there's no need of the equivalent of the Atiyah bot lemma, but then other parts um, of the, um, the the approach are um, uh, become more complicated. So, um, so yes, so so just to uh, say very quickly, the Bay conjectures um, used to um, uh, calculate Betty numbers of non-singular complex projective varieties by by counting points in associated varieties defined over finite fields. Um, and so to apply them in, in this situation, we want to, we can assume without loss of generality that our compact Riemann surface actually is, is um, a non-singular complex projective curve defined over, well, the rationals initially by sort of a perturbation and then over the integers with, with good reduction, um, modulo p for, for almost all, all primes. And then you can start thinking about the associated uh, non-singular projective curve over um, a finite field of, um, of characteristic p. And then there's this, this nice um, picture coming from Bayes' theory of, of matrix divisor classes, um, which I uh, don't think I have time to um, describe in any any detail, but you you describe the um, uh, the vector bundles up to isomorphism in terms of this double coset space involving the Adele ring of the um, of the curve, and um, yes, I think I um, I don't really have time to. Um, to talk about the 
um, uh, this picture in any any detail. But basically, you you have a vector bundle, you trivialize it over the, the generic point of the curve and over the formal disks um, about each um, uh, each closed point of of the curve, and um, and you get this description in terms of this double coset space. And if you fix determinants, then uh, you get a, a slightly different description um, in terms of um, SLN on, on the, ring, uh, the ring of Adele's. And then there's this nice formula, Siegel's mass formula, which um, expresses the so-called Tamagawa number um, of, of SLN. Um, as a sum over um, all the isomorphism classes of, of bundles on this, um, on this curve C. Um, and, um, and the thing that, that plays the role of the contractibility of the infinite dimensional affine space in the number theory approach is this um, identity um, which says that the, this Tamagawa number of SLN is actually one. And so then when you partition uh, the bundles by their hardened Arisimen type, and you use this Siegel mass formula, and then you can express some of the ingredients in that in terms of the, the so-called zeta function of the curve, um, which is obtained by counting uh, counting points divide, defined over fields of, of size q to the r um, for, for any r, uh, where q is a power of r prime p, then um, that tells us that the number of, of isomorphism classes over, uh, over this field fq of semi-stable bundles um, on this, on the curve with rank n and degree d is given by um, a, uh, a formula which via uh, the Vey conjectures, we can go back and, and um, use that to get an uh, inductive formula for the Betty numbers of the moduli space. So the, um, uh, the Siegel mass formula, which really, and uh, coming from the, um, uh, and the additivity of, of counting points over, uh, over finite fields, in some sense, plays the role of, of the equivariant perfection of the Yang-Mills functional, which, um, which comes from the Atiyabot lemma. So there's this um, very beautiful parallel between the, um, the gauge theory approach and the um, uh, and the number theory approach, which um, which Michael Atiyah and Raoul Bott uh, discuss in um, in their their paper. So I will finish there, and um, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Francis, for a wonderful talk and survey of um, these two papers of, of, of Atiyah and Bott and the surrounding mathematics. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that the question and answer box is a place to type um, questions and um, I'll help Francis field, field those questions if you uh, want to pass them on um, that way. I, I had one question just as the talk was going, the perfect Morse function is a phrase that has great importance all the way through um, this work, but then was the notion of a perfect Morse function something important or noted or important examples before um, symplectic geometry and um, the tier bot paper? Or was it, um, was it in fact a phrase coined by some people working in this, this area at that time? Well, I, um, I don't know enough about the history, but I, suspect that it had been around for longer and in particular in Bott's work because he used yeah. um, uh, Morse theory to, um, um, to, to do all sorts of, of nice things. So um, um, uh, 
uh, and in particular in situations where um, where you do have a um, a perfect Morse function, but um, but I think I think one of the um, uh, the new things that appeared in 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 this paper was was the idea of um, um, uh, an equivariantly perfect um, Morse function and and this this beautiful idea which is in the um, the Atiyah Bot lemma um, which um, allows for for the um, the possibility of of um, uh, of of seeing that the um, uh, that the the function is is equivalently perfect by essentially just looking at one critical uh, set at a time, and that it um, it somehow just by itself um, uh, in by just looking at at that critical set and and the neighbourhood of, of of that critical set. Um, uh, you can uh, you can get the the perfection, and that's something that um, um, that couldn't happen for um, uh, at least in a if you're in a compact finite dimensional situation. If you were just using ordinary um, ordinary cohomology, then you wouldn't get you couldn't get this situation because it it. Um, it crucially relies on on having um, having cohomology and uh, non-trivial cohomology in infinitely many different um, degrees because you have to have this um, um, this thing that's not a zero divisor, um, this this equivalent Euler class which is not a zero divisor, um, and um, but is of um, uh, of of strictly positive degree. And, and that can't happen for um, uh, ordinary cohomology for a compact manifold or a finite dimensional manifold. Yeah, so I don't know nothing about the his history, I'm afraid, but I suspect that it had been around for a, for a while. There is one question in the Q&A from Nikita, but I think it's something I missed as the slides went by referring to one of your slides, the um, expected form omega, the power DMF should be read as the exponential of omega on the right hand side. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, I'm sure there are. Um, uh, yeah, well, I noticed some misprints going through and I'm sure there were others that I, um, I hadn't noticed. Yes, apologies. I'd also wondered whether, as a, a as a graduate student reading the tier bot paper, the, the connection with number theory and the, the vague conjecture approach is sort of tucked on, if I remember, right at the end of the paper. And I, I guess I now wonder whether that was something they only became aware of as they finished the paper, or they were aware from the beginning that there was a, another approach to computing the Betty numbers. That I'm not. I'm not completely sure, um, but my guess would be that, um, well, yeah, I'm mean, certainly the, um, in order to prove that, that the stratification by Harden Arasiman type um, is um, is a nice stratification, and and you get um, um, uh, you get locally closed submanifolds of this infinite dimensional uh, space, and and so on. Um, they're using results uh, uh, of Schatz and and other people, which are um, are closely linked with the. Um, uh, the Harder um, uh approach. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess they may well have only 
sort of realized part way through that um uh that this i mean at some point they must have 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 realized that the um the more theory ideas applied to the yang mills functional should should link up with with um the harder narrow semen uh picture but um i would imagine that at least at that stage they um uh they learned about the um uh the number theory uh ways of, of um of calculating but i suspect that um that they they knew about it from from the beginning because um i think that that michael was uh was always interested in in bundles and uh, moduli of bundles and so on there's not, another question from nikita on, on this on this theme there in the q a is there a modern understanding of why the symplectic volumes of these moduli spaces given by zeta values have connections to number theory well, um, I don't know whether it's um, it's really a good understanding, but um, from my point of view, I like to think of um, um, there are um, uh, there are sort of three um, three ingredients forming a triangle where where any two of the three um will give you the um the third and then there's a um sort of match up with the um uh with the the number theory approach and approach and um uh, and looking at the associated varieties defined over finite fields so so the um so on the one hand you can um uh you can describe uh the these moduli spaces as finite dimensional quotients of um of algebraic varieties by um um by finite dimensional uh group actions and they form a sort of um family so that um um in some sense in the in in the limit as um essentially as as you take the um the degree um to infinity so um uh then then they they give you in some sense in the limit the the a tier bot infinite dimensional picture and um in the finite dimensional picture you can uh you can take the um you can look at a moment map you can take the norm squared of the moment map um that uh the corresponding more stratification then corresponds to the so-called instability stratification um which um um associates to um uh to any point um essentially the um uh the one parameter subgroup which is its maximally destabilizing one parameter subgroup up to conjugation and so then you can do a um um uh then you can um in this finite dimensional situation you don't have uh nearly so many of the issues linking up with the vague conjectures um so um uh so you really can just count points um uh on uh associated um uh, uh uh associated varieties to find over finite fields and use the vague conjectures as one way to get an inductive formula for the um uh for this um um the the cohomology of the um of the semi-stable the equivariant cohomology of the semi-stable locus and um but also uh, in that situation, you can use the Atiyah bot um, lemma essentially to um, to think about it from from the other point of view, um, and um, and that and show that you've got an equivalently perfect um, um, Morse function, and um, and so then then you can. Um, you can link up those um, 
those finite dimensional pictures with the infinite dimensional picture and and there are various ingredients including um, work of, of Graham Siegel and on that that show that they they match up nicely and in the finite dimensional um, setup then um, essentially I think the the crucial thing is that from the um, um, when you're trying to use the vague conjectures then things are nice if you have something that's that's both projective and non-singular and if you lose or compact and and non-singular and if you use lose one of those either one of those conditions then um uh then things become much more complicated and the very nice thing about this instability stratification is that um i mean obviously the strata themselves are certainly not projective but the equivariant cohomology can be described in terms of um, uh, things which are um, projective together with some very uh, simple ingredients. Um, at least, um, at least if, if you get rid, if you um, avoid the problem that, that, that semi-stability is not equal to stability, which you can do by blowing up or, or various other things. So, so roughly speaking, I think the, um, the crucial ingredient from the counting points point of view is that these strata can in some sense all be described in terms of, of things that are, are non-singular or at least Deline Mumford stacks, whatever, and also um, projective. Um, and that's, that, yeah, whereas, and, and that in, should be related to to um, somehow the Atiyabop um, lemma, but um, yeah, but it's it's not really clear to me at all. Um, so. Well, although there is one more question in, in the Q and I think we're just over time, um, so I'd um, perhaps wind it up here and um, invite you all to virtually, however you can, uh, send thoughts of. Uh, Thanks to Francis for um, a, a wonderful presentation. Many thanks. Yeah, here's a great talk, Francis. Thank you. Yep, oh, many thanks. Okay, Good. well, yes, yes I, um, I'm afraid I have a busy afternoon and I've got <laughs> other things a whole load of, of um, uh, meetings that um, I'm supposed to be at, though um, I may take the excuse to be a little late for um, for the next one. But um, yeah, yeah, many thanks. Yeah, no, we are grateful. Nice Thank to you. see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Take yeah, care. Bye. Right. bye. bye.